with the first question on the mic on my left. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dr. Naik, uh, first let me just say I'm really honored to be standing in front of you. I've watched your programs on Peace TV a lot and I really think you're great. Can we have so, your name? Yeah, Please. my name is Mahesh Ursekar and I am a PhD student in the Department of Philosophy of Mumbai University. Uh, my question is a little technical. Uh, I would like to know what the concept of soul is in Islam. As you know, in a lot of Indian philosophy, soul and mind are uh, uh, taken as different, whereas in Western philosophy, soul and mind is considered as the same. So uh, my first question is, what is the concept of soul in uh, uh, Islam? And the second question is, what is the relationship of the soul to the body? So that after death, uh, you know, does the soul leave the body? and uh, you know uh, uh, things like that so there is a two-part question what is the concept of the soul and how is it related to the body and what happens to it after death thank you but the Mahesh has asked the question that what is the concept of soul in Islam and what is the relationship of the soul and the human body and what will happen to the soul after death that's the basic question that's correct uh, as far as the soul is concerned, the soul is the essence of the human body. The main importance as compared to the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creation of Almighty God, the major difference in the human being, it is the soul. And it is the essence which will remain even after a person dies, which I'll discuss later on. As far as science is concerned, science does not speak about soul. Science hasn't reached that level where it can decipher what is the exact essence of the soul. But there have been researches done that when any living creature dies, for example, animal when he dies, as compared to a human being, when an animal dies, immediately after when he dies, there's no difference in the weight. But when we analyze the weight of a human being, the moment he dies and he seizes life, immediately there's loss of weight. That means there is something that the human being is losing the moment he dies. But science hasn't reached that level so far to decipher what exactly is soul. Soul is the essence of the human being. And the Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, Allah says, zaikatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. In this world, this life is the test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalakal mawta wal hayata. That Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life is a test for the hereafter. And every soul shall have a taste of death. When once a person dies, his soul is not there. But on the day of judgment, when he'll be resurrected, then depending upon the good deeds and the bad deeds he has done almighty god on the day of judgment he is malik ramadin he is the master of the day of judgment depending upon how you have failed the test in this world depending on that then your result will be whether you go to paradise or hell so the soul is that lives soul doesn't die it only has a taste of death when a person body life so the relationship with the body and soul put together you have the human being here but in the year after, there will be absolutely a new body given and the soul will survive and then depending upon how he has fed the test, he will go to heaven or hell. Hope that answers the question. Is the soul the same as the mind? But that was the question that is, it the, is the soul the same as the mind? No. Mind, again, mind is abstract. If I ask you where is your mind? So we will say, okay, fine, you know, mind, is it in the brain? So this is an abstract word, like how you say, mind your own business. You know, so mind, when we say people start thinking of the brain, but that doesn't mean that the mind is in the brain, but it is different. So mind is like an abstract word, that if you scientifically medical college, I do not know where the mind is placed. But when we talk about the mind, normally we start thinking about the brain, but that's an abstract word. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Yes, brother. Hello, my name is Mahesh Mehta. I am a re retired person. I visited 15 Islamic countries 
Salah area for men, women are different everywhere. Even Masjid and Abhi, Salah area for men and women is different. Karbala, Najab, Kajmen, Samra, Damascus, Masak, men and women, Salah area are different. But during the Hajj times, Mina, Muzdilfa, Arafat, Safa, Marwa, and when doing Tawaf of Kaaba Sari, men and women are together and Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Masjid, uh, 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 Betul Mukaddas in Jerusalem, men and women are together. Why? Mr. Mahesh Mathas asked a good question and you know Mahesh Mathas in several years since the conception of IRF, MashaAllah, he is the person who is a non-Muslim who used to take video cassettes when we started in 1991 and maximum cassettes he has taken and I feel that he has seen more cassettes of IRF than any other Muslim also. He has asked the question that when he has been to many mosques throughout the world, most of the places, the prayer area for men and women, it is separate but when he went to Hajj and when he went to Makkah and Mina, Muzdalifa, the prayer area is the same and men and women are mixed and separate. What does the face to realize that everywhere, even in Makkah and in Muzdalifa and Mina, the prayer area is same. But because of the situation, for example, when we go to Makkah and there one of the important pillars is you do tawaf. Now when you do tawaf, you can't have separate area for tawaf. That's the reason while doing tawaf, there's bound to be, we can't have separate spaces. But after they finish tawaf, normally men and women have got different designated areas, even in Makkah. But while they are doing tawaf, if the salah time takes place, some women may not reach the designated place, so there are occasions when they stand in areas which is not designated for the women. So because of this, there are occasions when we find, when we see, there may be some women mixed up in the gent area, but ideally, you see, when you come at the rear side, not of the tawaf, not of the mutaf, at the other part, you find that there is separate designated area for the women and separate for the men. In normal mosque that we have, the entry gates of men and women is separate. In haram, there are separate areas even for women to enter. But because when they go for tawaf, there is bound to be that they mix. But when they pray, they are supposed to be at different areas. But because the time may not permit them to read the area, there are occasions when you may find that there may be certain mixing on certain positions. Same thing in Mina. Same thing in Muzdalifa. Even in Muzdalifa and Mina, you will never find men and women standing in the same room. Because they are scattered. It's a very big area. We, because they come with their families. Same when they come for the Haram. In Makkah, they come with a family. So here, because they come with family, to have separate segregation, half, suppose it's maybe 100 acres, so half for gents, half for ladies, then the family cannot stay together. In all the other mosques, because the mosque is small, you can easily have separate area for Salah, separate for entry, separate for exit, and they can meet the family outside. Here, because Muzdalifa, Arafat is hundreds of acres, and the family come together to do Hajj, while they stay in... Arafat, Mina, Muzdalifa. So at that time, even when they pray, men and women don't stand in the same row. There is a separate area, but the areas are scattered. Because of that, it may not look that they are separate. But if you go to Masjid al-Khaif, that is in Mina, or in Arafat, Masjid al-Namra, there, there is separate segregation, just like any other mosque. Because when they pray in a large gathering, in a large area, it is difficult when families come together. Otherwise, always men and women, they are supposed to be separate. Why? Separate but equal facility. The reason is so that they can concentrate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and there is no intermingling of sexes. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes, brother. Third mic, is it on? If there's no one, there's no one on the mic, we allow the fourth mic, the ladies, we can have the question from the ladies section. Yeah. First mic. 
السلام علیکم بھائی اور بہنوں کو میرا میں سنگی پیڑا شاہ ٹیچر ہوں میرا کوئی 